Hey guys and gals, got another one for you today. Well, it didn't take long in my Badger to get an Ace Tanker, and actually I got two for you. So this is my fifth game in it, and you get a lot of carryover feel from the Tortoise. Um, I guess it really depends how you play your Tortoise, but I play mine aggressive, and I try to push with the team, and I try to just keep my gun active until my tank is no longer with the green team anymore. So as I come down here, this T49 is trying to get my flank. You can see I have an exceptional crew. This is the same crew I had my Tortoise. Great repair crew. Um, clutch braking. Has the terrain resistance. Like, this is just... This is my second best British crew. And this guy is a beast. Now playing this with like a two skill crew might be pretty tough. Because uh, if you do get immobilized, they can get behind you, right? So the main thing here is making sure that they do not get behind you. I like to play with aggression, and I like to give micro movements to the front of my tank. The lower plate is a weakness on this thing. And certain tank destroyers, if they put their super shells in, they can punch through. Uh, the front, but it's not it's not guaranteed by any means. Uh, really your lower plate's the main thing you gotta watch out for. And then, honestly, your side armor is not that great either. Um, so getting shot through the drive wheel is pretty painful on this thing too. All right, so come around the corner, get a shell into that waffle. You see, I haven't let up. Like, I love to push and I love armor. I um, just love to push, push, push. Just like in the tortoise, keep the gun active. Make them take me out of the game. Like, you have to outshoot me, or you have to get to my side and outplay me. But I have teammates with me. Unfortunately, that one doesn't go into the side of the ISM, which the ISM does have good side armor, but to think that his track absorbed my shell there is pretty ridiculous. I mean, he must have been angled to be perfect. All right, so we've got a four tank advantage coming out of the city. This is going to be a long drive. You can see that red team has, um, they're aware that they're losing the south, or it feels that way anyways, because they're starting to make an aggressive push. And we still have a lot of tanks up there to defend, so uh, I'm thinking at this point, I need to get up there and try to get as much damage as in before the game's over. You see, we're, we're already up to 4k damage, 1500 blocked, and I'm full health. I do have a damage track, I care less about that. You can see my loadout. I have large repair kit, 105 octane, and what do they have? T? I think they have T. Pretty sure they have T. Um, and that's just to. I try not to use my large repair kit because just having it available helps you put your track back, or helps you repair faster. Once you use it, you, you lose that bonus. Um, and then, obviously the 105 octane is gonna help me move around better and spin so people can't get behind me. And the T is just gonna help everything 5% for my, my driver, so. It is expensive, I'll tell you that. Like, making money in this tank is pretty hard. Now, is that 277 shot gonna cost me? We'll find out might cost my heavy tank and then I go to pull forward and just kind of awkward so I have to take a little extra time to kill the fatherland and my t10 dies 277 shoots but does not damage me and are you, are you kidding me what just happened like within a one minute span we go from a four tank advantage to two tanks down so I feel like I need to go. I need to keep, keep the pressure up. I'm full health. I need to pressure these heavies. They are beat up, so as long as nobody gets to my side, we should be good. <clears throat> this Kronwagen, he decides to park and shoot at me, and after he bounces his first shell, he realizes what happens. That pesky little 277 gets on my side, takes the first uh, amount of damage off of me. And I can see that there's a charioteer flanking me. So yes, I give my back to the 277, but I feel like this guy's way overcommitted. He has no help, so I need to bury him. He tracks me, which is a good track. 
You see, I'm not gonna use my repair kit, and I get that shell in just in time. If I didn't have the T, I don't think that would have loaded in time. Now as I come around this corner, I'm gonna try to take it tight. He's gonna try, I don't know what he's doing. It doesn't matter, he's dead. <clears throat> All right, so even though I'm still wiping people off the board, my team is dying just as fast. So it's 11-11. We must have had a suicide that I wasn't, I didn't see. All right, my Jag's on a sliver, and now he's dead. So I got an IS-7 on my right and a 277 on my left. I feel like if I go down on this 277, and I miss him again, I'm shooting down at him. Oh, that's frustrating. And then I kind of have to give up my side to get down here, which allows the 277 to hit me again. The IS-77 gets a shot in, or IS-77. The IS-7 gets a shot into me, and man, do I need those shells back. No, both times I bounce off that 277. Looking down into him. All right, whatever. Still not over yet. Already just threw a shell at me, but I feel like if I hug this hill right here, I should be pretty safe from Artie. He's got to loop it over that rock up there and then loop it, loop it over the edge. I IS-7 expected me to stay there, um, and I kind of expected him to come over right. Are you... What? Dude, that... Whatever, good shot. Already good shot. Okay, this is I-7's track. T-30, I got his side right here, and... Oh, side of a T-30. My gun's inside of the T-30. And it bounces off his turret. I mean, maybe I could have aimed a little bit lower. These are the worst. I hate, I hate getting ace tankers in a loss. It drives me crazy. Um, but a nice game and it really gave me the potential of like what this tank can do and i don't see a lot of people play the badger like this so <clears throat> i don't really hear a lot of people talk great things about the badger um, i have come across badgers that are hull down covering their lower plate and they are a pain in the butt and i try to avoid them if i can't get beside them like if they have help with them all right jump into the second game this is my 16th game in the badger and this time I'm platooned up with Hoops. Uh, he had a little bit left on his tortoise to go, so he did use a little bit of free XP to get it after I was bragging about how much I enjoyed it. Um, and he too likes it. I mean, we play it with a really aggressive play style, and like I said before, I don't see a lot of Badger players do that. But I feel like it really just forces people to deal with you. like. As long as you have support, they either have to try to force shots into your lower plate or they have to try to get to your side, which if you have someone with you, it's not that easy for the enemy team to do. So I fluff a shot on that M103. I mean, I could have stopped and shot at him, but I want to get advanced. I'm going to push forward, get a shot into his side there. You can see there is not many tanks that I would make this play in. I don't recommend this play at all for anyone, but <clears throat> we really wanted to push them, see how we could do here, and shut that AMX 30 down. And now you're sitting duck if you sit here. So what we want to do is try to close the distance on the red team, and if we can get them spotted there, our team behind us can shoot them, and then they're going to back off their ridges which is going to allow us to advance even further. I guess is the concept here. A lot of people will sit back there and try to outspot them, and that just becomes a war of, like, pecking and poking at each other, which drives me crazy. I have armor. I'm going to use it. If they want to sit up on their ledge, even if I can't spot them right away, as soon as they shoot, I should be able to light them up. Now to cross this field and not get shot at by the middle um, is pretty absurd. Now you can see it looks like I turned my back to the enemy team, but I have a rock in between us. So um, right now I'm daring them to come over and deal with me um, because I'm going to shoot their teammates up the butt. So I'm gonna help my teammates out by killing their spotters. And I wanna see if their tank destroyers, look at that reload, that is beautiful. Their tank destroyers will come try to take care of me. Um, however, I have cover fire. I 
The reason we could push across that field is because we had a lot of tanks in like E6. Our team was aggressive on that ridge line and took the middle. Um, so since they have the middle, look at this. Oops, is just bullying this E5. Like, I don't know if the E5 is even pending him. As I back up for another shot, I see that the T30 is coming around. Hoops lets me know that he's going to shut the E5 down. The T30 bounces the shell off me. This tank is hilarious. I love it. This tank's so fun. Reminds me a lot of the uh, Wizard 113 GFT. Tier 10 Chinese and Tier 9 Chinese tank destroyer, to be honest. Um, obviously, the armor, frontal armor is a little bit more reliable. Um, the gun doesn't hit as hard, but it reloads a little bit faster. No complaints about the penetration on this. This thing is just, it moves better than the tortoise and it doesn't have a top cap. Like those are my two biggest complaints about the tortoise and there's a tank that has, has it, right? So I missed the ISU 152. It's gonna allow Hoops to shut him down. Hoops, you gonna shoot him? No? Okay, I'll take him. All right, so we clean this up. Honestly, we think that the rest of their team's on the zero line. Okay, there's one in the middle, whatever. We're going to say good game. We're going to pressure their cap. If they want to come back and defend their base, that's great. There is a couple tanks still missing on the map, so they might come back. We might get to fight someone, but all in all, we're going to call this a game. Oh, hang on. Somebody, somebody did come. Sweet. So there's a leopard back there. Once again, he didn't pen me. Now you definitely don't want to get too over aggressive and you need to understand like what's with you because if you push over onto let's say four, four enemies and you have one tank with you, they track you, they get to your side and there's nothing that that one tank can do to help you out um, so you still have to be smart and understand the situations but um, definitely don't think that this thing is relegated to ridgeline sniping it can push it can push and this gun is pretty phenomenal i enjoy it a lot the apcrs punch through heavily armored targets I'm contemplating whether I drive off here. Is the leopard going to come back up and try to get a reset? He does get spotted there. And he gets shut down, but the Scorp G lives. Let's so get to end game stats here. Just happy that I threw down an ace in a winning match, so I didn't have that cloud over my head of like getting an ace in a losing match that I should have won um, but high caliber 5100 damage 1500 assisted and ace tanker 2000 blocked overall great tank make sure you like share subscribe and I will catch you in the next video